Okay, this is going to be a video on the tone generators, the signal generators that I use. So when you hear an amplifier in a video, uh, you'll see the guitar or guitars that I used, and you'll know uh, what you're hearing. Um, because if you're hearing me play this thing with single coils, and you've got some really modern high output gent guitar, you'll know to make adjustments of what you might expect if you had that same amp yourself. Um, or if you have a similar guitar, you'll know that, hey, yeah, I'll get similar results. So I'm just going to go through an overview of what my guitars are that you hear in the videos. Um, nothing too high-end, nothing too esoteric. Um, you know, pretty much bread and butter guitars, which are important. Uh, but, you know, if, they're, if you are interested in amp but you hate the guitar that I use, you may know why. Or if there's a sound and you wish it were this or that or the other let you make a better um, informed decision about whether you like an amplifier that you hear on the restorations and repairs that I do. So we're going to start with this guitar, which is the one I've had the longest. This is my 2005 Eric Johnson Strat. I got this in 2005 as soon as they, the first ones came to Memphis. Uh, not because I'm a huge Eric Johnson fan, though I do respect him and uh, appreciate him. And not because I was under any illusion that having the Eric Johnson guitar would make me play like Eric Johnson. Um, but it, I thought, and still do, that it was the best production Strat the F uh, Fender has made in a really long time. It's got an alder body. It's got a maple neck. It's got a 12-inch radius, some medium frets. Um, it's got staggered non-locking tuners. What's really important about this guitar is that the uh, face of the headstock is set deep off this, uh, the, the, the level of the fretboard, and there's a bigger scoop here than on most fenders, and the headstock is thin, which means that you don't have to have a string tree to have the proper angle. That's very nice. Uh, Robert Scobie of Scobie Guitars put a bone nut on this, uh, which is something that you'll have on every guitar featured in this, and dress the frets. From the factory, they were quite good, but he gave them a level and a, a fret dress, and now they've been perfect. Um, oh, these 17 years or whatever. Uh, it's just beginning to get the wear on the maple fretboard. Um, if I had been gigging, it would be more worn, but I've not gigged in a long time, sadly. Besides the uh, 56 contour alder body and the neck, which is really nice, quarter sawn, fairly deep, C with a, just a hint of a V to it. The selling points of this guitar were that they made a better bridge than they had on the production ones, and they had the special wound pickups, the Abigails. Well, when I'm testing amps, I need quiet pickups, and the single coils that were in this guitar were just too noisy. Uh, when I do the next Strat, which does have some true single coils, you'll hear why the buzz is a problem for me. So I sold those Abigails, and uh, these are Kinman Traditionals. I'm not sure what he calls them now. I think he's called them something else. But when I bought them 17 years ago, eight, uh, 16 years ago, they were the Traditionals, the 50s set. I've been very happy with them. Uh, fairly standard wiring. I have a neck tone and a bridge tone, which affects this position, this position, and then this position, and this position. No tone in the middle. Um, not really necessary. And if I wanted to play funk, uh, that real bright middle position is nice for that without the tone circuit. But most of the time I'm on one, two, four, and five. Uh, the bridge, while yes, it was better than most of what you find on, say, the American vintage reissues, it was not great. Uh, it did not have great tuning stability, and it came down to both the knife edge and the, uh, the slots, uh, the, the holes for the... Uh, for the screws, and crucially, the slot in the saddle was not long enough, and so the string would contact uh, both uh, the, the saddle itself, where you want it to contact, and the hole coming out of the block where you want it to contact, but also the uh, edges of the slots. So you had three witness points, uh, not two. So I replaced this with the Callahan bridge, which gives just the one witness point here and one witness point at the block, it takes out uh, the, you know, the, the slot 
so much better tuning stability and the arm uh, the knife edge is really sharp and clean uh, really great tuning stability and the arm has got that teflon thing that they put in there and uh, uh, i don't have any noise out of the arm i think the arm is a little bit shorter too i think it's their 63 whatever they call it anyway i've been really happy with this guitar and it just does all this uh strat things i like this is the traditional strat sound only without noise <laughs> I've got this in E flat, so standard tuning, just a half step down. These are Diodario uh, 10 through 46 nickel strings, nothing special. I've tried all kinds of strings, and uh, no matter who famous uses a certain string, I don't sound like them. I went down the path of trying to sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan in the 90s with 13s and 12s, and uh, never sounded anything like him. <laughs> It's not the strings, but this is a good meat and potatoes strap. Um, I've got the bar set up so that it does not float. It's against the body. It doesn't go down a lot. But it comes back to tune very nicely. So for the floating thing and the little swoops, great. Uh, it does drop when I do a bend. Not a huge amount. As some of you may have guessed, while this is the Eric Johnson Strat, uh, my big hero uh, for that kind of thing was really Gilmore. So. But you know, as long as you're in G minor. Mess it up, but there it is. Uh, you know, so it's a great all round guitar. Uh, which leads me to guitar number two, signal generator number two. All right. I always wanted a no caster or a broadcaster or a very early 50s telly, but for some reason, my particular ship has not come in, so I knew that was probably not going to happen. And I've had various reissues over the years, um, and I'm persnickety. So what I did was I got a Music Craft neck and body. This is, I think they're 51 spec, including the over route here, where just a little fat lip of, of pocket hanging out like on the originals. Um, so very thick maple neck, one inch all the way down. I may take a little bit off the shoulders. I haven't decided yet. It's it's a beast of a neck. I've got big hands, but I think if it just had a little less on the shoulders but kept the back to front, it'd be better. Uh, has uh, Godot staggered locking tuners, but because the uh, plane of the uh, where the tuners are is not as far back from the plane of the neck as it is on the Eric Johnson, it does need to have that string tree just for best uh, angle on the B and E. Doesn't seem to affect tuning stability. Uh, so it's a one piece ash body and it's finished really thin nitro. And for the color, I didn't want that dark butterscotch. I found a lot of photos of uh, 50 through 52 Telecasters underneath the uh, pit guard. And so this was almost white when I had this done for me uh, two, three years ago now, and it has begun to age, and you can see the grain through it. it. doesn't have a lot of filler. It's a really thin finish. It's begun to chip as I use it. This will eventually get darker. Since this is not gigging and there are no uh, uh, smoke-filled bars anymore, it's not gonna do that 
butterscotch that the real ones did, but that was as much about nicotine as it was the original color. So I wanted, you know, say a 51, early 52 Tele, but I didn't want to deal with all the flat head screws. So this has got stainless uh, Phillips head screws. It's got a huge neck. It's got a seven and a quarter radius, medium frets. Um, it's got a fender ashtray bridge with that slot notch taken out right there for finger picking, though I rarely use it. Um, it's got rudders, saddles, uh, they're compensated, the brass. You notice this one is shiny. I used to have an aluminum EA for more twang, but I don't really play country, and I found that it was just a little thin on those strings, uh, and changing it to brass has given me the low end I was looking for. The pickups are uh, DiMarzio Noiseless. This is the Area T neck and the Area 615. Uh, bridge, which is their natural bridge. It's a little bit hot, not too hot. I've got a little bit lower from the strings and I have had it for a long time. I may raise that back up. It's pretty well balanced now, but I like having that snarl of having this higher. So, you know, it's noiseless. It's not as quiet in terms of noise rejection as the Kinmans, though it is shielded, but they're good pickups. I fall in and out of love with them. volume tone. All my guitars are wired to what people call the 50s mod. Uh, it just means that the tone circuit is connected to the wiper, not the input of the volume pot. So as I turn it down, I'm not losing treble, but I'm not getting an unnatural uh, high-end coloration that a lot of the treble bleed circuits can give. So... On this one, I got a little three-way switch that I almost never use. And back here at standard telly, it, in the middle, it's uh, 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 Esquire, so no tone. A little bit brighter, a little bit out, hotter output. Again, never use it. And then forward, it's a cock -twa. Which just sounds kind of stupid with this uh, clean amp. Uh, this is a 64 uh, four Super Reverb, by the way. But through a higher gain amp, this can do some cool things. I think Joe Walsh or uh, Neil Young with Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, but I, I rarely use it. I may remove this switch later. So that's the Telecaster. Uh, so that gives me my 50s Strat and my 50s Tele. It actually says Psionic Blackguard. Because, you know, I take myself very seriously. So if you've watched enough of my videos, you'll know that, yeah, I really like... Um, uh, David Gilmore, and I also really like Alex Lifeson a lot, a lot, a lot. So I wanted to have a Strat, a modern Strat that could get some of those sounds, and you know I love Van Halen and that stuff. So I wanted something that could do the full rock thing, but was still a Strat. I didn't want a Floyd. I didn't want anything too high output, too metally, too pointy. So again, uh, I made one. Um, I was heavily influenced by Sir on this. Uh, I know John Sir. He's a friend of mine. I still can't afford his goodies. So I rolled my own, so to speak. Again, it's a Music Craft neck. It's a quarter sawn, like the Eric Johnson. It's got the flame. I don't care about the flame. I care about the really nice quarter sawn. Again, it's a fairly thick neck, not as thick as the uh, Strat. I'm sorry, as the Tele. It's in between the Tele and the Eric Johnson. It's a little bit thicker than most, uh, really comfortable. Uh, uh, it's got a 10 inch radius and it's got some medium medium jumbo frets um, again with the goto locking uh, uh, staggered tuners again needs a string tree 
You can see that I, I boogered it up and I need to patch that at some point. Uh, I was too impatient. Uh, I take a lot of time on customer zaps. On my own stuff, I get impatient. This is the Psionic Ego Booster because I take myself very seriously. Um, so it's the Music Craft neck. It's a fender body. It was being parted out on the stratosphere. It's alder. It's three piece, uh, three color burst. It's a two piece body. It's really pretty wood, real lightweight, real resonant. It's, it's a really nice body. It's got the uh, polyurethane finish, uh, which I don't care about. The other ones are all uh, uh, nitro. This thing is great. Um, so I went with Sura pickups. These are the V60 LPS or whatever he calls them, the single coils. And the, this is the Thornbucker. Now I've got the Thornbucker um, a little bit lower than I might otherwise, so it doesn't dwarf the output of the single coils, uh, which is something I've, I've, I change sometimes. Sometimes I raise this and it gets hotter. I've got it wired up. So single coil, single coil, single coil. There's that 60 hertz hum. No hum. Hum. No hum. Hum bucked. Now I've got this wired up with a push pull, which I rarely do. So if I'm here, this is the bridge in series. Full humbucker. Here's the bridge in parallel. Very similar to the bridge on a single coil bridge on a strat. Humbucker. Series. Parallel rather. And then again, if I'm in the bridge middle position, if this is down, then it's the full humbucker in parallel with the single coil. Or the middle pickup in parallel with the uh, parallel bridge pickup. So um, I really love the Thornbucker. And while these uh, Sur single coils sound fantastic, the single coil buzz is a real drag when it comes to testing amps and demonstrating amps. This room is just very noisy. There aren't any full nulls in it. I can get a little bit better, but there aren't any great nulls. So I'm probably going to end up replacing these two pickups with either the DiMarzio virtuals or whatever they're called this week, areas, area 63s, I think, or maybe I'll get two Kinmans on this. Kinmans cost more, but I found that they really sound fantastic and keep the Thornbucker because I'd like this to be quiet in all the positions. I'd be much more useful. The uh, bridge is a Goto 510. It's two point. I've got it set up barely to float. It can pull up just a slight bit. It's really so that the body isn't influencing its return to zero point. It's, it's just in balance with itself. So I can pull up a little bit. Um, but I can't do all the back stuff. I've had it. I've had strats set up for all the back pull up stuff and I don't like where it ends up. It, it feels weird and palm muting is difficult and I always throw it out of tune. This I don't throw out of tune. But this one has a much wider range uh, than the uh, uh, Callaham. So for what I would use a Floyd for, this does it. Um, as far as tuning stability goes, this thing has been really stable. I just did a big old swoop. Now let's do a pretty jazz chord.
maybe not Peterson perfect, but most people will not hear the difference. Um, this one and Vitelli both. Vitelli has 10 through 46 in standard. This one's got uh, 9 through whatever, uh, D'Addario XL9's nickel in, in standard. So this and Vitelli are in standard. <laughs> And uh, aside from the humbucker, this guitar is pretty much, and you know, one being E flat, one being standard. When I went do a test with a Strat, I grab whichever one's closer. I don't find that I like this one or the Eric Johnson any better than the other. I mean, I like them differently for different things, but. Both of them tell me what uh, I need to know when I test an amp with a Strat, and then this one just happens to have the rock and roll position too. But when that's not enough... this SG. Now, there have been a lot of videos about this SG lately, so most of you already know this. Hopefully you're watching all the videos and you know this. If not, like and subscribe so you can see all of them because they're just so damn good. Anyway, this is a 2020 SG, the 61. Um, uh, also has a new bone nut because the stock nut sucked. Has Klusen locking revolution tuners. Low profile, very lightweight. I like them very much. The stock tuners were not great. The frets uh, were really good from the factory. They've just been polished. Um, it's got um, Manlius Fat Diane Alnico 2 pickups, which is, I think, 8.1 and 8.6K. Now, you'll notice this has a lot more output than the Sur. The Sur Thornbucker is about the same in, uh, uh, DC resistance, in about 8.6, 8.7K, as the Manlius. They have different magnets. They're, they're wound differently. And this one is a lot closer to the strings. So, you know, I can get closer to this with the Thornbucker if I want to. Or I could back this off and get closer to the Thornbucker with this. But they are different uh, pickups. Alnica 4 in, in the Sur, Alnica 2 here. Um, it's got the Vibrola, which I rarely use. I may take the bar off. Uh, I tried and tried uh, to make peace with it. I don't like the mechanical feel of it. The Strat is a better design, but this has a different sound than the stock bar. So for this period of SG, this gives the right sound, I feel, in my opinion, but I think the stock bar makes it sound like a different guitar. So even if this bar comes off, this bridge I like a lot, and it's pretty. Um, Wire 50 style, again, Diodario, uh, 10 through 46, Nichols, XLs. Nothing fancy there. Um, I haven't changed anything on the amp. So what was clean with the Strat. Breaks up. If I play really softly. Or if I back off on the volumes a slight amount. I really like the fact that this can clean up. In fact, can sound a lot like that tele telly. But then it has that extra snarl. So, you know, when it comes to this kind of thing, Lifeson, Jimmy Page, Dwayne Allman, you know, the standard uh, cast of characters. I love these guys. I've always, you know, you always want to be able to approximate the sounds in your record collection, 
even if you can't make the sounds exactly yourself, you can't blame the gear. So I love this guitar a lot. I'm really happy with it, uh, with, with all the tweaks I made. Oh, it also has a uh, Faber posts directly into the body rather than the threaded inserts that Gibson had. And it's got the Tone Pros locking ABR1 with nylon saddles. And I'm really happy with all this now that I'm not trying to make the bar work. I think that's just uh, something I don't care for compared to the Strat. And it, you know, it's good to have two guitars, this and the Tele, where I can't use the bar and cheat. I've got to really think about everything I'm doing. So those are the tone generators you're hearing, the signal generators in the videos. There'll be another one once I get that bass uh, exactly where I want it. Um, side note, if anyone cares, I'm using Dunlop 88 millimeter flows, uh, which is just a different shape of the standard uh, uh, tortoise 88 millimeter, uh, the green ones. Uh, I like this. I use the Jazz 3 for many, many years, but I found that the Jazz 3 um, was a little too stiff when it came to, uh, to using the back of the, you know, there's a sound a fender medium or heavy gets when you use the back of the pick. And you just really dig in. Might be better to do that on this, on a Strat, but I couldn't get that with the Jazz 3. It just went to hell. So with this, I can use the back of the pick and get that kind of bigger surface area. But I can also flip around to the tip and choke up and then mess up on the video. So I find this gives me the Jazz 3 kind of feel. But I can flip it over and get a big floppy Fender sound. I can just choke up on it if I want to. Anyway, as you can tell, I still have a lot of practicing to do, and maybe I shouldn't do these videos first thing in the morning. But that's when I have coffee. <laughs>